So uh, tell us about this latest ruling and its significance and its the context of that case. Okay. Um, the, the, that case is, is the Al Haramain case. Um, Al Haramain Islamic Foundation was a, was a charity in Oregon um, that um, found out through a mistake, basically, um, that the government had been um, tapping its phones without a warrant. Um, what happened was during, um, during some, some legal proceedings, the government accidentally sent um, a confidential piece of information to Al Haramain. Um, which which talked about this warrantless wiretapping. Now, no one is no one's allowed to talk about that piece of information. It gets it gets very confusing. People had to go and you know read about it in a secret you know in a in a protected chamber and leave the document there. And um, but the, this was one of the few organizations that had um, you know proof that they had been that that they had been been wiretapped. Proof from the government itself. Um, this case um, was uh, part of it was grouped with the same judge as as all the dozens of telecommunications cases. So they all sort of went worked through the courts together with the with the same judge. Um, but what happened um, last month is that the judge found that um, actually made a ruling that the government illegally wiretapped tapped the charity and said that the government had to be held liable for violating the law. Well, yes, that's exactly right. So um, it, I, it, I just want to expand on the significance of that point that you raised, that this is one of the few, uh, comp- the, the few organizations that could actually prove it had been wiretapped. Why is that important for establishing their case? Um, the, the the way that the, the the justice system works here is that you 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 need to be able to prove that you had been harmed. Um, in our in our jewel case, the one that the judge ruled um, against several months ago, uh, he argued that um, that the case had to be thrown out because too many people were harmed and that there was no way to 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 um, to to have a, a, a to, that a case so big just simply couldn't make its way through the courts. Which is a tough reasoning, and when when why we're appealing that as well, um, but um, but th- this is a case where the 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 law is very clear. There's no um, there's no wiggling around by saying like, well, it, it couldn't be everybody, and how do you know they listen to your you know they listen to your conversations and not somebody else, or how do they know they read your email and not somebody else? This is just a very very clear example, and 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 the government the government still tried to get out of it, and the judge finally said, no, that's enough. It's it, this is as clear as it can be. Right. So um, this is the third time that a, a judge has ruled on the illegality of this program, and the other ones have been appealed by the Department of Justice. Uh, what do you expect will be the outcome of this ruling? Well, um, it, it very well may be appealed. Um, the The judge um, said that um, Al Haramain, which is a charity, can voluntarily dismiss some of the some of the claims and get a final judgment um, or they can press some other claims um, and then it'll and then it'll keep going um, truthfully um, it, it, like all these other cases the government is is likely to appeal and then it will go to the Ninth Circuit um, and then um, probably ultimately to the Supreme Court Rebecca Jeske of EFF.org And for those people who still believe that this really is Bush's law and that the Al Haramain case is something that really only applies to the Bush era NSA, of course it doesn't. Of course, Obama said that he was going to be uh, different than the Bush regime on this case. But of course, that too was a blatant and utter lie, as was proven shortly after he actually got into office. This administration also puts forward a false choice between the liberties we cherish and the security we provide. I will provide our intelligence and law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to track and take out the terrorists without undermining our Constitution and our freedom. That means no more illegal wiretapping of American citizens. No more national security letters to spy on citizens who are not suspected of a crime. No more tracking citizens who do nothing more than protest a misguided war. No more ignoring the law when it is inconvenient. That is not who we are. And it's not what is necessary to defeat the terrorists. The FISA court works. The separation of powers works. Our Constitution works. 
We will again set an example for the world that the law is not subject to the whims of stubborn rulers and that justice is not arbitrary. Our fifth story in the countdown, that was then, this is now, President Obama's Justice Department now not just defending Bush officials from lawsuits surrounding National Security Agency domestic spying, but seeking to expand the government's authority by making it immune from any legal challenge regarding wiretapping, ever. Welcome to change you cannot believe in or sue over the case. Jewel versus NSA. Five plaintiffs who contend that AT&T illegally transmitted information about their phone habits to the NSA. Attorney General Holder's Justice Department arguing a lot of things, including something called the state's secrets privilege, the executive branch's standard go-to move to protect classified information. But the real doozy, the Obama administration seeking to expand its authority, arguing that under something else called sovereign immunity, the government can only be sued if the wiretaps involve willful disclosure. Page 5, a willful violation in Section 223C1 refers to the willful disclosure of intelligence information by government agents. And such disclosures by the government are the only actions that create liability against the United States. In other words, unless the government publicly releases any information about you that it has gathered by spying on you, you cannot sue it. It gets better, and by better I mean worse. The Obama administration wants you to believe that it does not matter if the program is no longer operative, arguing that the same standard should apply for the first Bush terrorist surveillance program, the TSP. Page 15. Attempting to demonstrate that the TSP was not the content dragnet plaintiffs allege, or that the NSA has not otherwise engaged in alleged content dragnet, would require the disclosure of highly classified NSA intelligence sources and methods about the TSP, and other NSA activities, even confirming or denying already publicly confirmed facts, like the compliance of AT&T and other telecom giants, right down to the numbers of some of the rooms in which the information mining machinery was contained. That is apparently out of bounds. Page 16, the DNI again has demonstrated the disclosure of whether the NSA has an intelligence relationship with a private or particular private company would also cause exceptional harm to national security. The Obama administration. Surprise, surprise. Well, what needs to be said about that other than that, yes, the left and the right are two wings of the same bird of prey. But we already knew that, didn't we? So, moving right along, I think something that needs to be brought out at this point and something that is not often specifically talked about in regards to this program is the fact that the semantics are very important because we talk about the NSA wiretapping case as if the NSA is actually physically tapping people's lines. And even if they were doing so, that would be one level of illegality and something, of course, to be abhorred and resisted. But that isn't the case, of course. Tapping people's lines physically as if they, they are sneaking into the back room of uh, some telecommunications hub and, and tapping the wires. Of course, that's not how it works in this day and age. Of course, it's all done electronically. And as a whistleblower revealed shortly after the NSA program was blown wide open, this is in fact a deeply, deeply troubling issue. And it is not by any means targeted at a few individuals.